everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. We get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, and sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I can't express that more. Please subscribe to the channel to get these great interviews, or else my guest is going to kick your ass. Isn't that right, Glenn? Yeah, that's right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come all the way over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come through the radio, come through the radio and kick your ass or through the, through the, the radio. Jesus, what am I dating myself here? Yeah. On the old telegraph, when you, uh, <laughs> when you send the signal through, I'll be waiting at the other end with the clicker. All right. You guys better uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Um, coming up, I've got Brent Butt as well. So I'll uh, just let you rockers out there know I'm not changing the channel format. I'm just diversifying a bit, maybe 15% if you could put a number on it. Just want to add a bit of levity to uh, the channel, but we've got some great rocker interviews coming up. So thanks for joining us. Anyways, I've got that Canadian guy, Glenn. How are you doing? I'm all right, man. How are you? Uh, as I say, and it's getting lame and old to anybody that's watched my channel, I'm a million bucks shy of being a millionaire. And you know who said that? I can't remember who said that. It was a big guy, Canada, John Candy. Oh, did he say that? He said that in the movie um, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. So uh, oh, I think Martin okay. asked him how he's yeah. doing. Right. His dogs were barking. Yeah, I remember that scene. Yeah. He, oh, it's all these dogs. And then he didn't he do his uh, washing his socks in the sink? And then, then yeah, the, 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 whole, the whole trip there. Yeah. Oh, man. It's not, not unheard of to anyone who's been on the road, be they a, a, a rocker or a comedian. <laughs> I can imagine for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 similar in the way of you you um you mark your territory and plot up and uh you know down the graph of the country for decades or years and um before you get your big break and a lot of those would be spending it in uh i mean in your van or your in or in a motel in some, in some fairly horrible places sometimes <laughs> I, I can only imagine but i mean that's what gives you the thick skin i would think Oh, I would think so. Well, yeah, but I mean, it, it, okay. Do you need that though? Do you need to really stay in a band house that's got the door that, that just above the doorknob, a giant hole where someone has punched through to, so they could, I guess, break in. I, I or maybe they just forgot their key. I don't know. But uh, do you need, is, is, is that really the kind of toughening up you need? Or do you need to be on stage more? You know, it's because we get lumped in with the the, the musician sometimes, and, you know, a band house is really not where you want to stay. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, um, there's a different, I mean, they're, they're similar in aspects, but yeah, if you're staying in a, in a smaller town or something in a band house, they might be partying till five in the morning and you got to get up and uh, get to your next gig. Well, so does the band effectively, but what I'm, what I'm talking about is the general treatment that a band would give any physical location versus... Oh. One comedian, <laughs> right, right, yeah. You know you, you're not throwing any TVs out the exactly, window. exactly. Um, so everybody would know you as that Canadian guy. I'm thinking everybody. Um, that's let's how hope. I'm... Pardon? I said let's hope. I've been I've been pushing that brand for about twenty something years now. So let's hope. And that, you, uh... you just celebrated the forty years on the road. Well, that was in 2022, November. But just for the viewers out there that are tuning in, that are interested in comedy and Canadian comedy, um, just give us a bit of your bio, just so that I don't fuck it up. By the way, you can swear. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I've been doing comedy over forty years, actually. But the show you're talking about is a show that I did in Winnipeg in November, which is the fortieth anniversary of my first trip to Winnipeg as uh, my first Canadian tour. Effectively, is what that was. Listen to this squeaky chair. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so basically, I, I had this newspaper article that I've been carrying around since 1982, which is uh, from the first show that we did in, uh, in Winnipeg. And now I have a companion article 40 years later, almost to the day. I almost managed to do it to the day, but uh, couldn't sort that out. So anyway, it's pretty close. 40 years, 40, I call it 40 years of funny, even though I've been doing comedy more than 40 years, that would be, I guess, the professional mark, you know what I mean? Like, mm. if, if you're touring, you're a pro, I think, at that point, right? Right. And you've been on CBC Debaters, uh, oh, yeah. I guess Comedy if you Central. Wanted, let, me, let me pad the resume further. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, I've been on, I've done Just for Laughs eight times. I've probably done a half a dozen uh, Winnipeg Comedy Festival, all the, all the various uh, Canadian located comedy festivals. 
uh, plus a couple of comedy nows, which still, there was one running the other day. They're, it's, they're still running like these, these shows that are 20, 20 years old. They have to change the name to comedy then, I think. Yes. But they're still running and, and uh, yeah. Well, there's a demand for it and the algorithms don't lie. So, I mean, they're still running is because people are still watching. So, well, I think they're still running because they pay no residuals and it's free money to the network. Oh, they just uh, pay a contract out at the beginning or something. Like uh, that. Exactly. Exactly. Jeez. Oh, so, yeah. um, sorry to mean to interrupt. That's quite all right. So uh, we could talk a bit about classic rock, but there's one thing I really wanted to ask you because I asked Derek Sagan this and he gave me a great example about the Garaga. And heck, no, that wasn't even it. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyways, um, hecklers. I was just watching Richard Pryor just the other day. Oh, and yeah. There was a scene about Richard, and it was um, about hecklers. And the funny thing was, he apparently said he was seven years sober at the time. And he was everybody was laughing during his, his monologue or his skit. I don't know if that's the proper term for comedians, but... Um, no, no, okay, you can tell me. <laughs> no, you can say monologue, but don't say skit. Okay, perfect, perfect. <laughs> that's one of the most... That's a, a pet peeve among comedians. People come oh. up to you after, here's something you can use in your skit. Okay, so I'm going to edit this out because I don't want yeah. one of you guys using me. No worries, no worries. So during your uh, your show or his show, um, everybody was largely like probably 15,000 people in the venue, probably 1980 or something. Mm -hmm. And th there was hecklers, like they were coming on hard. It was like, you know, you're a liar and stuff. And it was like, out of these 15,000 people, there's like 30 people in there that came in hating him. So he handled those pretty good. He was a little nervous, it looked like. I don't know, it was because he was sober. I don't know. But, and then Derek had told me one about um, recently, he was in Ottawa and there's a heckler in there. And I don't know, he ended up making her cry. So I don't know, what's, give Aww. us a good heckler story. I don't have a good, I don't even have a good heckler story because I try not to have hecklers. Because what about this? To, you suck, Glenn! You know, I, try to just keep talking. I try to just keep plowing through, you know? I, I don't understand what's going on lately, especially, there seems to be this big focus, especially on uh, social media where people are doing all this crowd work and they put that on social media. You know, and the reason they do that is because they don't want to, uh, burn material. It's called burning material. If you, if, uh, if I, you know, show you a clip of something I'm doing on stage, well, then that's out there now. And then when you come to see me, it's like, oh, well, he's doing that same thing that that's why people put crowd work up because crowd work, if, if I, you know, interact with a crowd for five minutes, I can put that on, on social media and it's not going to interfere the next time someone comes to see me to do a show because I'm not, going to be put it, you know, that's, that's not going to be part of that particular show, right? So it's safer and, and uh, for, for comedians to put out stuff that they don't care about, right? Like that's like, if I'm putting out videos, uh, you know, short videos for, for whatever, then I try to pick things that I don't care about, which is either stuff I did a long time ago, or maybe stuff that's in the news that's going to go away like that anyway. So it's, you know, not going to affect when someone comes to see your show and goes, oh, he's doing the same material. Yeah. Right? So, so that's called crowd work. Okay, I get it now. So well, the crowd work is what they do with the, yeah, with, it's with the crowd, right? So you, hey, hi, hi, how are you? Where are you from? That kind of stuff. That's all crowd work. Kind right? of like the back and forth. Okay. Exactly. So just standing there and delivering your, your bits, that's, that's just your standard, you know, stand up. Okay, so it's, it's a bit. Not a skit, a bit. So I was close. it's a bit, not a skit, it's not, and it's not a sketch either. <laughs> it's not a sketch. It's not schedule. It's schedule. Okay, that's right. Um, so classic rock. Um, you've uh, seen my channel. Um, what kind of music are you interested in? I, I I'm mostly uh, classic rock. Uh, I'm all you know. I've got all the. Uh, I've, I've still got a record collection. I've still got uh, probably I don't know. 300 albums, 400 singles. I have singles, you know. The oh, little, those little 45s? 45s, exactly. And I've got some some pretty obscure ones, too. I don't know if you uh, were ever a Flintstones fan. But, I love it. Do you have what, um, uh, I, 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 when Fred drops the ball on his toe? No, I have the way out. Oh, everybody loves the way out. The way way. <laughs> exactly. The the, the, way it was out. actually released as a, as, as a 45. So I have that. Um, wow. and, uh, some other obscure things, I guess I got a few, um, uh, picture discs and colored albums and that sort of thing, you know, the Boston picture disc from their, uh, their debut album, uh, Rush, Hemispheres, 
Uh, what's the other one I have? Uh, can't, can't remember off, offhand, but a lot of colored vinyl. Remember colored vinyl was a big thing. Yeah. Uh, Devo's original, uh, marble vinyl, which they called it marble vinyl, but it was really just all the other little bits of colored vinyl that they had left over and they poured it into one smush of a mold, I guess. And it looked like marble, but it basically should have just been called leftover vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, just uh, just a curious question here. Um, what was the turning point in your life um, when you decided comedy was going to be a way to earn a living full time? Uh, well, I used to work in advertising and um, I was I uh, I got a leave of absence from my last advertising job in about 1984 uh, and decided to, you know, take a shot at it, uh, move to L.A for 11 months and uh then when it came back comedy was pretty much exploding in canada anyway so um yeah but what what was the actual well i mean i enjoyed my my advertising job in fact uh if i if i'd stayed in advertising i i probably could have been like a don draper or something like that you know minus the chicks and the booze but uh I knew about I knew about advertising long before I even knew about comedy because as a as a way to make a living I'm talking about right mm -hmm. because of the show Bewitched right because really? if, if you recall the show Bewitched uh, I she, know of the show I she know. was a witch of course but her husband Darren worked in advertising he was an advertising creative guy and so his whole job in the show was coming up with slogans and and uh, crazy wacky promotional ideas and all this sort of stuff and so i thought i could do that and that was uh so i did i actually worked for an advertising agency for a while uh then i married a witch and uh, <laughs> Uh, I can edit this out, Glenn. If that no, was no, it's fine. We get along fine. She knows. She knows that joke. That joke's been around for a long time. Yeah. So, and and really, I'm dating myself even mentioning the show Bewitched because, you know, that the 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 baby in Bewitched, I think, is like 60 years old now. So. Yeah, I remember her. Um, I don't. Know what, she was blonde. I know yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, Elizabeth, and, um, Montgomery. Think, Elizabeth Montgomery was the original actress yeah, in Bewitched. Yeah, got a darn good memory. I do remember the name, yeah. and I do remember him coming in. He was tall, and he was he's got like brunette, brunette dark brown hair or something. Slim. Yeah, dark hair. Yeah. yeah. No, um, I didn't. Well, how I old are you? How old are you? Um, I don't know. What do you want to hear? <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind then. I'm fifty, uh, fifty something. And it's, yeah. Okay, oh, so you're in you're in the ballpark. Right. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you're, you're, you're close to me. Uh, you'd be in the ballpark for, for that show, mm -hmm. but, uh, most of the people listening to this might not be, who knows? Well, actually, no, that's <laughs> not correct. My demographic, oh, no. because it's hard rock is actually... because, it, because of your classic rock. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I usually, I get an age group and the Google analytics will show you. It's like, um, I don't know. I think it's like 35 to 50 is my, I was going to say, yeah. Time. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I am a classic rock fan for sure, but I also like a lot of the new stuff too, right? Like a lot of um, uh, newer. I tend to lean towards the harder stuff. The the the. I, I don't like the really you know throaty screaming type uh, metal type stuff, but you know, I mean, all the classic stuff, you know, Iron Maiden and, and yeah. Judas Priest and, right. and Deep Purple and all these albums that are turning what fifty this year. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, speaking of uh, Deep Purple Rainbow, I've got Joe Lynn Turner coming up, interviewing him soon. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. So, this is, this is a bit I've been doing for a while now. And this is something you never want to hear at a classic rock concert. Yeah. All right. This is one from our new album. Right. No. I know. No. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, remember Dana Carvey had that bit? He's I don't talking remember, about the preamble. Actually. No, no. He said there's a preamble where um, all these rock stars, before they go on stage, they say something that's like totally off the cuff, but it's really meaningless. If you actually listen to it, he goes, this song, everybody goes out to all the people around the world. And that's it. Okay. All yeah. the people. And so then my, my, my whole tack on this is, is that uh, I think we may have to start heckling, you know? 
it's like it's hard because these these guys there are heroes and everything else but we have to get the message across and in, in a gentle constructive way yeah. you know it's like all right this is one from our new rest on your laurels yeah 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 Make me creatively stop Actually, growing as an artist yeah homer simpson had a really good one about that too he was doing the la Palosa, but um yeah i know what you're saying exactly when you go to one of these shows you pay 50 or 60 bucks for a ticket 50 and, or 60 you're paying four or five hundred sometimes for these yeah <laughs> you don't want to hear the newest stuff that they're working no. on you hear stuff that worked well i know it's 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 weird how we change like that eh? because you remember going to see bands in the early days uh, you know of of being in high school and everything else and you couldn't wait for the new album right right but now when you go see classic rock you're like i don't want to see anything new please don't do anything new. i went to see iron maiden once nice and uh and I, i've seen them three times now i i saw them on their last their last tour was just phenomenal oh my god the staging and the lighting and just just an incredible like, must, must have had like five set changes yeah well full just set a, changes right just just quick interjection glenn sorry um, speaking of Iron Maiden, you know, um, um, geez, uh, what am I thinking here? I'm going to put it up on the screen. Not Dave Murray. What Bruce that? Dickinson? No, the other guitar player. I can't even think of his freaking name. Uh, Smith. Adrian Smith. Adrian Smith, yeah. yeah. Interview-wise, Adrian, uh -huh. I interviewed somebody that knows him. Okay. Yeah, Richie Coxon. So anyways, that was my, that's my stab at it's comedy. Claim, so I'm claim, stay home. Claim, claim to fame. Of, of Iron Maiden interview? Yeah, I interviewed Richie uh, Cotson, who uh, played, yeah. uh, who did a solo album with uh, Adrian. I'm going to edit this, this shit out. Anyways, <laughs> go ahead. You are saying? So I was going to say, so I went to see them, and I said, as I say, I've seen them three times, uh, but the second time I went to see them, they played their entire new album. The entire album. Which album was that? It was uh, Colors Don't Run, or... or uh, with, no, the song is Colors Don't Run. What the hell is the name of the album? Anyway, point being yeah, that, yeah. that they did, you know, it's like, and then they played maybe two or three of their classics. No way. But yeah, so that was like, really, you know, I like the new album, but I didn't want to hear the entire new album, you know? But uh, I get minor bitch, I suppose. Well, but, no, that's uh, a major. But on the last yeah. tour, the last tour was just hits, 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 hits. It was uh, maybe they might have played a couple of songs from the newer album. But uh, so these are the traps you can walk into going to see classic rock bands. You know what oh. I did see uh, mm -hmm. last year was uh, a show called Nostalgia Fest. We had a whole weekend of uh, cover bands, right? Mm-hmm which was fantastic. I mean, there's there's a lot of pluses to going to see cover bands. I mean, first yeah. of all, you know, they, they look like the original band. They sound like, and not only do they look like the original, they look like the original band when you saw them years ago. Yeah. For the most part, right? I mean, there's a few been kicking around for a while. I mean, there is, I mean, you think about casting a cover band, right? I mean, not only do they have to sound like the band, but they have to look like the band, right? right. So, for example, um, there was a Guns N' Roses cover band, and the guy who played Slash was phenomenal, phenomenal, and he looked like Slash, right? But mm -hmm. think about how hard that is to to cast uh, something like that, if, <laughs> because I mean, really, how many long-haired, skinny, greasy dudes play guitar? There's uh, quite all a few. of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is my point. Yeah, <laughs> the, the guitarist is is probably the easiest guy to cast, right? Yeah. But but then also think about so there was another band there doing Aer uh, Aerosmith, right? And this guy had played to Steve. So think about the irony of someone who has played Steven Tyler for thirty years singing "Dream On." Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's just like Steven was singing it. No, but what I'm saying is that, you know, the guy who's not really Steven oh, Tyler. Oh, he's dreaming on. Thank yeah. you. That was, the, that was the point of the joke. Yes. I got it. No, was, I got it. <laughs> actually, speaking of cover bands, I've interviewed a couple, and um, actually quite, or not ironically is not the word, but um, there's a band called the Iron Maidens, all-female yeah. tribute to Iron Maiden out of L.A. Oh, okay. That'd be interesting. And there's one called Paradise Kitty. And they're the all-female tribute to Guns N' Roses. Guns and Roses. Them, and they're yeah. great. Yeah. Um, 
she can sing like uh, Axel any day. Yeah. So what I'm, what I was saying was, so you go to see this, and it was a whole festival of cover bands, right? And it, I mean, it's fantastic because they're playing all the hits, right? Mm -hmm. And on top of that, they probably even play better than the band itself because the band only goes on tour once in a while, but these guys are out doing it every night, right? Well, look at the Mick Mars thing recently with Motley Crue and how he's alleging that uh, a lot of their shows over the last two or three years, a lot of those uh, were backing tracks. Oh, he's saying that? Yeah, he's suing the band right now for um, royalties uh, because he's saying he was basically... And these are my words, uh -huh. kids, don't take this uh, as verbatim, but he's alleging that um, he was moved out of the band, kind of pushed out, you know, nicely um, to get John Five in there. And part of the reason I'm thinking is Image, because, you know, um, Mick is, uh, I think, 15 or 20 years older than the rest of the band. He was older than them. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. And the other thing was his royalties went from 25 down to 5%. So he... Yeah, if you Google it after we get off uh, the interview here, um, Mick Mars, Motley Crue lawsuit, it's big now. Everybody's actually slamming the band. They're, they're coming to support Mick. Not right. only the fans, but other musicians. Because they, they're alleging and they're saying, you know, yeah, if that's the case, you know, that's not the way uh, you end a legacy like Motley Crue was. It's not, uh, not, not a nice thing to do. That's for sure. No. You know, and it's all about the brand. You see, the brand. Oh, yeah, always. Always. That's why a lot of these bands keep going for like 80 years. You know, they've had 32 last tours right. about the brand. And then they, that's, I, that's, I think they another... talk to them in private and say, yeah, if you, if you retire, then, you know, your, your roadies are going to be unemployed. And then the manager is going to be unemployed. What about right. the poor accountant who scrapes by making a living? Yeah. Well, there is something to be said for that because if you're a big enough brand, you're an industry and a lot of people rely on you, right? Yeah, Journey, Motley Crue. Exactly. So so the other the other bit I do is, you know, on the one hand, I think it's great. These guys are still out there, you know, the the Stones. And, well, most of the Stones and bits of The Who and parts of Queen and A, C, and maybe D. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Pink Floyd. And actually, Roger Waters is still doing well. Yeah, yeah. Um, my brother-in-law actually plays in a Pink Floyd cover band. He, he plays in a band called uh, Floyd Factor, and uh, okay. he also plays in uh, in uh, an Elton Ron cover band called, uh, or sorry, yeah, Elton John cover I gonna, band. I was going to correct you. Called, called Elton Ron. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and and they're a real fun band, right? Well, I but, can imagine. Uh, but I go see him when he does the, uh, the Floyd Factor thing. And uh, another little, uh, um, uh, we'll call it... Uh, it's kind of a personal story, but kind of a yeah. kind of a his story more than my story is that um, uh, they grew up in Ottawa, and my brother-in-law used to play in their basement with Brian Adams. No way! Wow. Yeah, before he moved to Vancouver. Yeah, Brian, yeah. Um, nice guy. I've interviewed him once, but uh, for sure, I, I I always thought he was BC based for some reason. But then I realized uh, he got his big break. He told me in an interview, Montreal, for some reason, took oh, okay. a break into him. Okay. Well, I, all, I, all I know is that he grew up in, in Ottawa and that he uh, played in my brother-in-law's uh, basement. And here's another odd odd little story is that I actually met my brother-in-law before I met my wife because I walked into a bar in Toronto once and his, his band was playing. It was a band called Antlers. And it was just a tiny, tiny little bar. And I remember it was pretty funny because they had this opening song in this tiny, tiny little bar, right? And the opening song was this huge uh, <laughs> kind of, uh, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't even think of it. Just And anyway, the song was, you're in the presence of greatness. <laughs> <laughs> it almost uh, has the same, uh, the way you're singing it. In the Garden of Eden. Well, yeah, you, well, no, nah, no. This was more uh, flamboyant and over the top, and like, like as if you know there were a thousand people in the room type thing. Oh, okay. For this tiny little upstairs bar. That, well, uh, if people anyway. were to say, was it packed? Say it was full, full house, seventeen well, sure, of people. Course. But just to be, just to be that uh, that big in that smallest space, I just thought it was pretty fun. That's hilarious. <laughs>
I, I before I forget, um, and I know you uh, you got a couple things to do. I wanted to ask you. Um, this wasn't even on my list. This was just a minute ago. I was thinking you're talking about bands coming in and playing their new album and stuff, right? Interestingly enough, I'm a huge fan of Jeff Tate of Queensrÿche. Um, he's been okay. solo for probably a dozen years, and he tours now, and it's amazing what he does. He does the entire albums now. They're older ones, like the one Rage for Order, Operation Mindcrime, okay, uh, Empire, where they got the hits. Like so I, love, I love, I love Empire. Empire. Yeah. It's actually the only Queensrÿche album I have. I think. Oh man, that's yeah. um in the. <laughs> I'll say the top five for me, that would be five. Uh, Rage for Order and stuff are my go-tos. But, okay. um, yeah, they'll, they're will they touring the world. Like, they're they're touring, like, nobody's business. Like, they, the Queensryche, Queensryche now, with different band members, I think they have two two of the originals, but that's it. I don't think they're even close to Jeff Tate right now. He's okay. selling out shows all around the world, and he's doing, like I said, sometimes even two friggin' albums. Complete. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he's... Uh, I think he's pushing 62 he just had heart surgery but i'd interviewed um his guitarist and bass player recently and he says jeff's phenomenal but see that's what i wouldn't mind seeing mm -hmm. it's not even a, a medley of hits i'd go to see an album like there's certain I... albums in the in the genre like for instance speaking of motley crew i'm a fan of crew i don't know about the politics anymore but right. shout at the devil if i went to a show knowing that it's going to be shout at the devil from beginning to end and maybe not uh -huh. kickstart your heart i think i'd be okay with it right I went to see Motley Crue a few years ago, uh, and up until then, I thought I was a Motley Crue fan, and I thought I knew songs, and I, <laughs> and then I just, first of all, they were so f unbelievably loud that my my head was ringing three days later, and it was, you know, the situation where it's just so loud you can't even really hear it. Yeah, you know? it's just like, a <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah. So I became less of a Motley Crue fan, actually, from actually going to see them live. Than, wow. uh, Where yeah. did you see that show? Was it the acoustics, maybe, or they're just... Well, it was outdoors, yeah, so that's one thing. Okay. But uh, I don't know. I just honestly, and, and uh, uh, you know, maybe it's a getting older thing or what. I just thought they were idiots. Wow, yeah. <laughs> I thought they were idiots. I, well, I, I sort of enjoyed a few of the tunes, but I was like, mm, you know. Prior to that, I enjoyed the music. I still enjoy the music, but I just thought eh, it was very cliche and stupid. And eh, anyway, speaking of cliche and stupid, actually, a good band I like is Steel Panther. You ever heard of them? I have actually heard of Steel. They're out of Montreal. No, God, no. They're out of LA, oh. and they're a, okay. they're a comedy band with the best musicians in the world. Right. Like, I they knew they were. I knew they were a comedy band. That's right. Yeah, great musicians. Actually, Russ uh, Parrish um, played on um, Rob Halford, a priest solo stuff. One okay. of the best guitarists I've seen. But they're so funny. So what they do is they make all these. They write all these lyrics and they play all these songs that are just way out there about overweight women and stuff like that. Okay. Like I mean, so sort guys, of everything. Spinal Tapish. Yes, a hundred percent Spinal okay. Tapish. Okay. And they have um, banter between the, the songs, but um, yeah, so I don't know how I got into that one. But anyways, I love Still Panther. Um, I know that you've, uh, you released Unchecked in 2022. 20, yeah, 2021. 2021. Yeah, May, May 2 4 weekend, actually. How Canadian is that? Well, that's why I forgot. Okay, <laughs> no. Um, and you've got coming up another album with uh yeah, I'm, I'm putting it together now i'm working on you know what bits to to you know kind of working stuff out in in the clubs type thing uh, and it's called unsafe and unnecessary uh as a little bit of a, a shot i suppose at all these you know safe room comedy and perfect and, and all that sort of thing because i i don't think comedy should be safe you know well Everything is so woke, and I know the title, and I was going to talk about that. Unsafe is the woke part. Unnecessary is critical thinking. And um, recently, um, I was listening to, um, you know, Jimmy Dore? I know a little bit about Jimmy Dore, but I haven't watched him extensively. But I do know him, yeah. He's yeah. got 1.5 million followers on YouTube. He's that huge now. He's just wow. huge. And his um, he's a comedian, obviously, to start but he's also into politics and stuff. And he's saying about the, the C-19 stuff and how he's never in his history of his life been 
you know, to listen to the politicians and say, don't do your own research, people. Don't just trust the science sort of thing. Right. And he says, well, how does that work? He goes, I was usually into things like reading. And he said, uh, uh, what do you do when you're going to buy a new car? Oh, oh, don't look into it. He goes, trust the salesman. What are you, Henry Ford? Yeah. That's his thing. So yeah. he's uh, on top of these things. And that's, I guess, what I, your I album didn't, is going to be. I didn't know for a moment there you said C19. And I, for a moment, just couldn't figure out. And I went, oh, okay. I know what he's talking about now. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we get censored if we say anything on here now these days. But Well, this is it, right? Um, yeah. I, I know, you know, and I've been doing, and this is one of my questions, right? Because because I have been doing a fair amount of stuff about that and the pandemic and 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 everything else. But by time the album comes out, is that still going to be relevant material, right? Like it still sort of is, but it kind of isn't, right? So I think it will be. I think it will be too, because I, I just I, you know. And I say this, and I've said this on stage, I, said, I just I just know, I just know, you know, I want it to be over, but I just know you're going to be getting your 15th shot. And they'd be like, sir, just go sit in that corner over there for a few minutes, and then you'll be ready for your 16th shot. In fact, it wears off between here and the chair, so you're going to have to move the chair closer <laughs> with each successive shot till I just put a IV in you and give you a backpack full of COVID vaccine that you can administer to yourself as you see fit throughout the day. But if, oh, I'm in a crowd. Oh, pump it up, pump it up, pump it up. <laughs> For me, I'm um, an intravenous would be caffeine. So, but yeah, no, I know you're you're right on the money with that, Glenn. You know, so. Uh... And then my question is, and I'm all for the technology, I'm a big technology guy, Mike, but my question is, will this interfere with the chip in my head? Uh, Elon Musk will give you an answer to that. With you can't get one, by the way. You can't get a chip in your head. I tried. You oh, really? Yeah. No, it's all supply chain issues. Some asshole needs a Tesla, so you cannot, Jeez. can't get a chip in your head. And I need one. I need one desperately. <laughs> Mine's buzzing. No. Um what do you think of technology like uh, what Elon's bringing with um, electric vehicles? See, my my take on it is I've read that mining for all those minerals that oh, go yeah. into the batteries. Yeah. Kill any it's, kind of um, benefit. It's what they would call a false economy, right? Because Ooh. the electricity still has to be generated. Yep. Right? But the the whole notion of, yeah, all those rare minerals and everything else have to be I mean, in a lot of cases, pulled out of the earth by women and children in Africa and open pit mines. So there's all kinds of stuff below the, the you know, it's it's the old iceberg, you know, that the, the electric car is on top, but there's all this yeah. shit down below. That uh, and, and here's one I heard recently, and, and, and I don't know if this is even, uh, it seems like a relevant thing, but you, then, you know, I'm not an engineer. But, you know, all these parking garages, right? Parking garages, uh, either, you know, uh, residential parking garages or commercial parking garages, whatever. The, 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 the electric cars weigh so much more than a regular car. Right. With the bat so if we get to the point where everyone's driving an electric, that's going to be like you're going to have to have far more reinforced buildings, concrete, all these things that people don't think about. Roadways. Yeah. yeah. And, and on, oh, tires are another thing. Oh, okay. Electric cars eat tires apparently because of the weight. Right. right. So it's like, okay, so you're, you're, you're not polluting the planet here, but you polluting it over here to make the, the electricity that it has to run, you know, yeah. I don't know. And, and, and I mean, I, 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 I want to think that it's a it's a helpful thing for the future, but at the same time, I think people are just fooling themselves. It's like, you know, like windmills when they get to the end of yeah. their life, they can't do anything with them. They got to bury them, right? That it's funny all this stuff that's you know made to to be green and and recyclable and everything. It just isn't. It isn't recyclable, you know. But you never hear the other side of the story, right? No. So. Okay. The other thing too is just just the common sense factor. You you go outside in minus twenty here in Canada sometimes of the year, and how fast does your cell phone battery die? It's the right. same thing with those cars. That's right. They definitely charge. Yeah. Well. Well. Uh, yeah. They definitely uh, um, they run down obviously faster if you're trying to keep your heater going and everything else. Right. Yep. 
and and uh, never mind that, just lining up to to to, to use a charger sometimes, you know, like yeah. it's it, it, it's okay. So it's it, from my house, it's five hours to downtown Toronto. But if I was driving an electric car and it didn't have the full range, then I'd be stopping. So you know, I'm now now my five hour trip to Toronto is like a seven or eight hour trip to Toronto, right? Yeah. If you can get near the charger, if you know, there's not a huge lineup of electric cars waiting to use it, etc. So there's a long way to go. I mean, I, I'm not saying it's the wrong direction entirely, but it's certainly not the you know the great savior that everybody thinks it is. Well, speaking of um, um, charging stations, you know, hotels have a lot of them. I wonder why. Uh, well, f probably for their guests. I'm thinking. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. Yeah. You want to go into Toronto for the day, you, know, you stop in Vaughan for the night. Right. Charge your car. There just aren't enough. There just aren't enough charge. There aren't enough uh, places where you can charge your car. And when you yep. get to those places, I don't think there's going to be enough chargers for the number of cars that are trying to use them. You know? Yeah. But they figure we'll get there by 2025. So, yeah. That should change over time, I would think. Yeah. yeah but. Definitely. Um. Before I let you go, um, I know you've got a few things to do. Um, what's the opposite? So busy. So busy. <laughs> <laughs> Sh showbiz and so biz. So what's the opposite of unsubscribe, Glenn? Subscribe? Yeah. So everybody do as Glenn Foster, the Canadian guy. That Canadian guy says, subscribe to the channel for these great interviews. Um, where can people go to um, get information on uh, what you have coming up uh, next, Glenn? Uh, Everything, everything you need to know know about me and way more than you ever needed to know about me and all the videos and everything else is at thatcanadianguy.com. Perfect. Actually, actually, the only reason I'm here is to tell people that I'm there. Well, we know you're around. We know you're around. Hey, thanks again for your time, my friend. I appreciate my this. My pleasure. Thank you. I'll put the links to everything at the bottom of the description box, guys. Just click on there and you can go to his website. And we hope to see you back here in Sault Ste. Marie again sometime soon, Glenn. I hope so. All right. Cheers. Thanks, man. Thank you.